Hello everyone, welcome to Gizmo China. I'm Kieran. The Snapdragon 888 launched earlier this week at the Qualcomm Digital Summit 2020. The 5 nanometer processor will power next year's flagship phones from several manufacturers, a large percentage of which are Chinese. The new Snapdragon 888 joins the high silicon Kirin 9000 and Samsung Exynos 1080, the other two 5 nanometer chips that have been announced for Android devices. We know our watchers are curious as to which of these three chipsets is the best at the moment. Only the Kirin 9000 is found in a commercially available phone, so the only way to compare these chipsets will be on paper. For this article, we will be comparing the Snapdragon 888 against Huawei's most powerful chipset, the Kirin 9000. This table here shows the major specs of the two processors. The CPU configuration is the first major difference between the Snapdragon 888 and the Kirin 9000. Both processors are octa-core chipsets with the same 1 plus 3 plus 4 CPU core arrangement. However, save for the four Cortex A55 efficiency cores, the rest are different. The Kirin 9000 may be Huawei's most powerful chipset, but its prime core and three other performance cores are the last gen Cortex 877 cores. When compared to the prime core of the Snapdragon 888, which is the Cortex X1, and its performance cores, which are Cortex A78 cores, the Kirin 9000 has some catching up to do, even though all of its cores are clocked higher. According to ARM, the Cortex A78 offers a 20% improvement in performance over Cortex A77. Well, the Cortex X1 offers a 30% improvement in performance over the Cortex A77. When it comes down to performance tasks, the Snapdragon 888 should take the lead. However, for tasks regulated to the efficiency cores, Cortex A55, the Kirin 9000 should be faster due to the core's higher clock speed. Qualcomm may have won the CPU category, but the Kirin 9000 is the winner when it comes to the GPU. The Adreno 660 is said to bring a 35% increase in performance over the previous generation. The Huawei claims its Mali G78 GPU performance boasts a 52% increase in performance over Qualcomm's last generation GPU, which is present inside the Snapdragon 865 Plus. Benchmark results indeed show that the GPU performance inside the Kirin 9000 is no joke. It scores 6,261 points on the GPU Benchmark app 3D Mark, leaving the Adreno 650 GPU of the Snapdragon 865 Plus with a score of 4,286 points in the dust. We expect the Adreno 660 to do significantly better, but we doubt it will be able to outscore the Mali G78. The Snapdragon 888 comes with the new Hexagon 780 AI engine that boasts up to 26 tops in performance. The Kirin 9000 also features a powerful tri-core NPU, dual big core plus tiny core, and currently sits at the top of the AI benchmark table. Qualcomm's processor is yet to get benchmarked, but the semiconductor company promises big gains. It remains to be seen if it can challenge the Kirin 9000. The Kirin 9000 and Snapdragon 888 definitely bring huge improvements to the mobile chipset space, especially in the Android ecosystem. However, they all have their individual strengths, the sum of which determines which of them is the more powerful one. The Snapdragon 888 wins in terms of CPU performance while the Kirin 9000 seems to be the one with the better GPU and AI capabilities. However, there are other factors to consider such as power efficiency, where the Kirin 9000 already does excellently well, as shown in our review video. So until there is an in-depth device-to-device -device comparison, we can't say which chipset is the clear winner. Xiaomi will debut the first model powered by the Snapdragon 888, the Mi 11, in these couple months. We will show you the first picture in depth about its performance, and then accordingly, we will draw our conclusions on this 2020 CPU competition. Please keep an eye on our channel to be the first to watch our review. Thank you for watching. This is Kieran from Gizmo China. We'll see you soon.